special thanks to Patreon support Transfighter 8 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, ScareTube before here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Yegged Panther. The Yegged Panther, uh, known by its official designation SDKFZ-173, is a tank destroyer built by Nazi Germany during World War II, based on the chassis of the Panther tank. It first entered service in 1944, during the later stages of the war on the Eastern and Western Fronts. The Yegged Panther combined the 8.8cm KWK-43 cannon, of the Tiger II and the armor and suspension of the Panther chassis. Although it suffered from the general poor state of German ordnance production, maintenance, and training in the later part of the war, which resulted in small production numbers and shortage of spare parts and poor crew readiness. Uh, the Egg Panther was basically another attempt by um, Germany to, a to equip the 8.8 centimeter gun uh, to a vehicle as a tank destroyer or self-propelled um, anti-tank weapon. Uh, other attempts were made using the Nash Horn and also the Ferdinand. Uh, the Ape Panther itself, again, is that kind of continuation of uh, Germans' kind of tactics of taking a, you know, standard chassis of already in development for a tank and basically using it to create tank destroyers and a bunch of different variants. We saw this with the Panzer III, Panzer IV, uh, you know, pretty much every tank that was a prominent tank that Germany made. There was a chassis that was basically based off the Panzer series um, altogether. Um, so the Panther, Jake Panther is just another, you know, version of that continuation of it. Um, the Jake Panther itself, uh, is equipped, as I mentioned, with the 8.8 centimeter main gun. It also is equipped with a secondary 7.92 millimeter MG 34. Uh, armor's got pretty good armor. It ranges from 40 to 100 uh, millimeters of armor. So pretty decent armor and everything like that. Uh, so this uh, vehicle here is a Patreon requested vehicle, so I want to go and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Trenchfighter8 for making this uh, video possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel and uh, you know more than you guys already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is down in the description where you can earn some cool perks by uh, becoming a uh, Patreon supporter and uh, pledging a small amount to donate to the channel each month. Uh, of course, if you guys don't, uh, you know, you guys don't have to, obviously, or you guys uh, aren't required to by any means, but it's just a nice way for you guys to you know, support the channel more if you guys uh, do feel that the channel does deserve more support than it gets. Um, anyways, it's down in the description if you guys are interested in taking a look at it. Um, so the request for this was the Yay Panther uh, by Trench, and he also requested that we uh, do this camo on it. So we'll be covering the camo as well. Of course, you guys can do whatever you guys would rather have for it, uh, but I will be building this uh, specific specifically to the camouflage as you can see in front of us. Anyways, let's take a good look at the vehicle to kind of get an idea of what we're going to be building, and of course, we'll move into the tutorial um, later on. So, uh, start off with we have uh, the main gun here. Um, as you can see, it's a whole locked gun, which means that the whole tank we need to traverse to uh, be able to uh, move the gun um, at more uh, sharper ang angles, really. So, if you want to aim over here, it would have to turn the tank to get face that direction. Um, kind of like that standard tank destroyer um, vibe of World War II. Uh, we have the driver's viewport located here to the left side, and we also have the um, hull-mounted machine gun secondary, as I mentioned before, located on the right side there. On the top here, you got various hatches, very various little details and stuff like that on the top there. Um, this tank also has the zoom merits um, armor, which basically was this kind of like uh, rigid armor, so you can kind of see I used the birchwood planks and stuff like that, um, and it kind of creates a nice uh, zoom merit effect with the armor. And you can see on the top here, we have it along the sides of the turret, but we do not have it on the top um, like it would be. So I, that was my attempt at doing the Zemerit armor, um, and it uh, definitely works um, works uh, okay. So, you know, kind of happy with it. Uh, we have the section here. This is where the crew compartment, obviously where the gun breach, everything like that would be located, ammunition, all that stuff, driver, and, you know, obviously passenger. Uh, continuing on, we have uh, the back engine detailing and everything like that. Uh, been completely redesigned for our new Panther tutorial, hopefully coming um, sometime soon. And um, just uh, various little details here and there on both sides, and uh, just the back overall section on the back here uh, with detail and everything like that. Um, overall, that's pretty much the Yate Panther in a nutshell. I think it definitely came out um, really good, and hopefully you guys do enjoy the build as well. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by starting off with our first layer, Layer 1.
All right, guys, so moving on to our first layer of the tutorial, we're going to start off with, obviously, layer one. Now, uh, before we get started, real quick, I want to mention that I will be, be building this thing in a full tan camo scheme with the Zoomerit armor. So if you guys are, uh, you know, interested in just the standard tan, um, you know, color, then you guys can just go and go with that. But we'll be adding the camouflage in a little bit later at the end of the tutorial. Um, of course, you guys can make this whatever color you want, gray, whatever, um, but we'll be doing tan, and tan does work better for showing the Zamer armor, obviously. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and start off by taking uh, a nether brick slab. We're going to place down a row of two of slabs like this. It's going to start the right side here of the tank. Come off those two nether brick slabs, we're going to place down two nether brick tops up off of, off of it like that. After that's finished there, we're going to go and place down a smooth sandstone block that goes back like this. We then want to place down a row of two of smooth sandstone. We're going to place down another smooth sandstone block like this. So we have these little gaps created right here. We're going to place down another row of two of sand, smooth sandstone. Uh, leaving our space here. One more smooth sandstone block going over. Row of two of smooth sandstone. sandstone uh, smooth sandstone block and an error row of two. Like that. So you get something that kind of looks like this. A little bit of an alternating pattern here. Now uh, along these uh, these um, smooth sandstone blocks and everything. We're, we're going to want to take some stone buns. And we're going to place down stone buns on each of these smooth sandstone blocks. We also want to go ahead and grab ourselves some item frames here to place down a row of item frames on the smooth sandstone blocks that stick out more than the ones in the back. After that's complete there, we're going to take our nether brick slabs. We're going to place down a nether brick slab going off this smooth sandstone block and another smooth sandstone block on the other side of this nether brick half slab. So you get something that kind of looks like that from up above. After that's complete there, we're going to place down a row of two of nether brick ups and down stairs across the back. With that all complete, we're going to go ahead and go to this smooth sandstone block here on the rear. We're going to place down a row of three of birchwood top slabs. Um, again, that's going to be part of our Zumerit armor. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and go to the front here. We're going to go to these narrow brick slabs right here. We're going to place down a row of three of um, birchwood slabs across like that. Um, in between our rows of birchwood slabs, we're going to go ahead and take our smooth sandstone, or just our sandstone top slabs rather, and we're just going to fill in space in between those rows of three of birchwood uh, top slabs just like that. After that's all done there, we're going to take our nether brick slabs and copy the same design we did on the air side for the tracks, just over here to this side. So we're going to go and just copy the same design. I'm going to do it a little bit quickly here, so if you do fall behind, just look over on the air side. It's the exact same thing, so uh, nothing's changed with it. And just like this across, and also our stone buttons. Can't forget those. Like this going all the way along, like that. And we also want to, again, place down item frames on those uh, smooth sandstone blocks that stick out. Once you guys have that done, that's going to do it for uh, layer one. With that, let's move on to layer zero. Moving on to layer zero. Layer zero is uh, pretty simple. All we're going to do is we're going to go and take the uh, take nether brick blocks. And we're going to go and break the sections in between the smooth sandstone blocks right here. And we're going to place down a nether brick um, full block in its place. So something like that to try to create a, a look of the tracks. Going over the section and we get a nice look for the wheels as well. They stand out a little bit more prominent. This is kind of a new design I'm trying out on some of my vehicles. So uh, still kind of a, you know, pro type thing, but I think it definitely looks a little bit better in making these wheels stand out a bit more. So uh, we have that on both sides, just like that for your tracks there. And you get a nice looking effect here. You can better see on this side um, for the tracks. Looks a lot nicer. Anyways, that's it for layer zero. With that, let's move on to layer two. All right, guys, moving on to layer two. For layer two, we're going to start off by taking our narrow brick stairs. We're place down a row of two on top of these two narrow brick top slabs on both sides there. In between those nether brick stairs, we're going to place down a row of three of birchwood stairs like that across. We then want to take some wooden signs. We're going to place down a row of two of wooden signs across the fronts of these nether brick stairs on both sides like so. After that's done, we're going to take our um, smooth sandstone blocks. We're going to place down a row of seven all the way across like this with a wooden trap door on both ends of this row of seven. After that's all done there, we're going to go ahead and take our birchwood. Uh, planks. We're going to place down a birchwood plank on both sides here, coming off the second through sandstone block inward. And uh, you can leave space in the inside here for interior if you guys choose to, or you can just fill it in with smooth sandstone or uh, birchwood planks. Either one doesn't really matter. Uh, continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of birchwood planks going all the way to the back here, basically to this uh, narrow brick stair here. So we're just going to place this row in like so. Again, going all the way back to the nether brick stair. And same thing over here. Just like this going all the way back like that to get to this back section here once we uh, get to this back section here uh, we want to go ahead and take our uh, birchwood planks and we're going to place down a row across in between these so we're going to place down a uh, birchwood plank here on both sides like this and we also want to grab ourselves a spruce wood plank and place it down in the middle like so 
Again, the space on the inside here, you can fill this in if you guys want to, or you can leave it open for uh, obviously interior space. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it in like that. Uh, so when we get to this, uh, the sides here, we needed to go ahead and complete the tracks. So for this, very simply, we're going to go from the smooth sandstone block here with the wooden trap door. We're going to place down two narrow brick top slabs back, followed by one, two, three, four, five, and six narrow brick slabs back, a birch wood slab, or sorry, my bad, a uh, sandstone slab, and then a narrow brick slab going back. Same thing over here on this side, two narrow brick top slabs, one, two, three, four, five, and six narrow brick slabs, a sandstone slab, and a narrow brick slab like that all going back. Once we have that all complete there, we're going to go and grab ourselves a stone button, place it, it down, coming off this or, uh, that spruce wood plank. Uh, we then want to place down a cobblestone wall here on uh, these two birch wood planks there on both sides. We're then, going to, we're then going to take a sandstone stair, we're going to place down a sandstone upside down stair on both sides, coming off the birch wood planks at a shape that looks something like that. And behind those stairs, we're going to place down a uh, sandstone top slab like this again on both sides. Uh, once we have that all complete there, that is going to do it for layer two. And with that, we can move on to our next layer, layer three. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer three. For layer three, we're gonna start off by taking our uh, birch wood slabs. We're gonna place down a uh, row three here on top of this row of uh, seven here of uh, smooth sandstone blocks across just like that, leaving a space in the middle. In the middle space, we're gonna place down a birch wood stair like that. Coming off the uh, two uh, slabs here, birchwood slabs on both sides on top of these uh, narrow brick stairs, you're going to place down two wooden trap doors on both sides like so. On the left side, on this wooden trap door to the far left side, we're going to place down a uh, ender frame like this with a glass block in the ender frame and a sign also coming off that wooden trap door like that to create the headlight up here in the front. After that's complete there, we're going to take our um, we're going to take our birchwood planks again. We're going to place down a row of five across the front here like this with a birchwood stair like this on both sides. So you get something that kind of looks like that for the front there. After that's finished there, we're gonna place down another birchwood stair back on both sides here. And again, we can fill in the space in the middle or leave it for your interior space. I'm just gonna fill it in with some smooth sandstone. Uh, we're also gonna take some item frames. We're gonna place down one and two <clears throat> item frames here on these two um, birchwood stairs. And we're also gonna grab ourselves a iron ax and also shovel and we can put down an iron ax here and a shovel for a bit of detail here, so some tools strapped onto the side here and um, everything like that. So you can put those in, you can put some different tools, pickaxes, whatever you guys want to do there. Um, anyways, continue on the side here, we're gonna place down one and two, uh, more birchwood stairs back, one and two, and again, we can fill in the space in between them, <clears throat> like so. So if you guys wanna just bring this all the way to the back here, um, you can just go ahead and take uh, some cobblestone walls, bring it pretty much all the way to the back there, like so. Um, in this case, however, I have these extra tracks mounted on, the sides here so very simply what I did here is I went ahead and took some nether brick and I placed down a row of three of nether brick full blocks on both sides here for spare tracks and I also went ahead and grabbed myself some dark oak wood fence gates and I placed down a uh, row of three birch wood fence gates opened up like this along the sides here for the tracks and same thing over here uh, just to add a little bit of more uh, detail to them and uh, everything like that so same thing here on this side like so uh, so the tracks there on both sides um, after that's done here, we will need to fill in a little bit of the space on the inside here. So, <clears throat> all right. So once we get to this point here, we will need to uh, switch up a little bit. So uh, on the inside here, you know how I was saying that you could fill it in if you guys want to. This section, you will need to fill in a row on the inside here. Um, so basically what we're going to do for this is we're going to go and go to our first uh, spruce and so block on both sides. We're going to take some, uh, some uh, birchwood uh, planks. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four birchwood planks back, followed by a black wool block. Uh, which we will need to go and go into our inventory and grab. So we're going to place down a black wool block like this, followed by a birchwood uh, plank and another uh, black wool block going back like so. Um, after that's done along the sides here, very simply we're going to place down <clears throat> one, two, and three uh, cobblestone walls. We're also going to place down a sign, which is going to be coming off the third uh, cobblestone wall. After that, we're going to place down a row of th three here of nether brick. So row three and nether bricks, uh, full blocks along the side here. And we're also going to place down a row of three of birch or uh, dark oak wood uh, fence gates open up, come off those planks. Uh, lastly, for this section here, we're just going to grab ourselves a uh, smooth sandstone block and place it down on top of this sandstone top set. We're going to go and do the same thing over here to this side. So I'm going to do a little bit more quicker. So if you guys, um, you know, fall behind a little bit, just look at the other side. It's exactly the same. Um, so just like this, working our way all the way back, black wool like that. Uh, and then our cobblestone walls, one, two, and three. 
Uh, we're going to place down a sign coming off the third cobblestone wall. Uh, we're then going to place down a row three here of another brick full blocks. Again, our dark oak wood fence gates coming off of them. Like so, opened up. Just like that. And that's going to do it for right there. And our smooth sand so block there in the corner. With that all done, we're going to go and fill in the space on the inside here. So we will, uh, we can we can choose to leave some of the space open. So we can, you know, leave that space open if we want to. However, once we get to the section in between these black wool blocks here, this section will need to be filled in. So for this, we can very simply just place a nice smooth sandstone block on both sides here, followed by a spruce wood plank there in the center. Uh, after that, we can go ahead and just take our smooth sandstone, place down in a row three across the back here. And actually, uh, this should be a birchwood slab here in the very center, or a birchwood plank in the center, followed by two sandstone blocks on both sides. Uh, once we have that complete, we're going to go ahead and place down a polished granite block here on both sides on top of those cobblestone walls. And we're also going to place down a cobblestone wall in between those um, those uh, granite blocks. After, or, uh, yeah, polished granite blocks. After that's done, we're then going to place down a uh, upside down birchwood, uh, yeah, upside down, uh, actually, my bad, an upside down sandstone stair like this on both sides. Actually, my bad, perch wood upside down stair on both sides. Come out the black wool block, we're also going to grab ourselves a uh, skeleton skull. Um, so we'll have to go into our inventory, grab ourselves a skeleton skull, and place it down on both sides of that uh, that uh, birch wood upside down stair like so. Uh, once that's uh, all done there, that is going to do it for layer 3. And with that, we can go and move on to our next layer, layer 4. Alright, so moving on to our next layer, we have layer 4. For layer 4, we're going to go ahead and start off by taking our birchwood uh, planks. We're going to go ahead and place down a row, starting off on the right side here. Uh, a row 4, uh, start off on this uh, smooth sandstone full block here. So, birchwood plank, followed by 1, 2, and 3 more over. So, you have a row of 4. And then a uh, birchwood top slab over here on the right side. We're then going to place down a cobblestone wall on the left side and also a cobblestone wall on the right side. On the front here, we're going to go to the center uh, birchwood uh, plank. We're going to go and place down a row of two of sandstone, smooth sandstone full blocks, followed by a cobblestone wall on both sides of that first smooth sandstone block. We're also going to place down a skeleton skull on both sides of the second um, smooth sandstone block. After that's done, we're going to go and take our sandstone slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six sandstone slabs coming off that. Uh, smooth sandstone block. We're also going to grab ourselves signs. We're going to place down a row two of signs along the sides here of these um, sandstone slabs. <clears throat> Just like that. Then we want to go ahead and go to this section here. We're going to go to the sandstone slab here on the very tip. We're going to place down a sign here on both sides again. And we're also going to place down a wooden trap door on the bottom. Just like that to go ahead and create our um, main gun. After that's finished there, we're going to go and take our uh, blocks. We're going to go and need to put birchwood planks along on the inside here again. So just like we did for this section here, we're going to need to do it up here. So we're going to place down uh, one going back from this um, this uh, top slab here. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six birchwood planks going back. Same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, and six birchwood planks going back like so and um, uh, just like that. After we have that done, we're going to go and grab ourselves cobblestone walls. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five cobblestone walls going back. Same thing over here. One, two, three, four, and five. Save a nice row of six on both sides of cobblestone walls. When we get to this section here, we're going to go and need to grab ourselves some stone buttons. We're going to place down a row of three of stone buttons on these three nether brick full blocks. Uh, in between these uh, birchwood planks, we're going to go and place down a row of three of spruce wood planks with a stone button on the two blocks to both sides. And again, on the inside here, you can choose to fill the space in if you guys want to. Uh, though you could leave it open if you guys want to for interior. Uh, coming back to this section here, we're going to place down a stone button on top of this spruce wood plank here. We then want to grab ourselves rails. We're going to place down a rail here on these two black wool blocks. We then want to grab ourselves another brick. We're going to place down a narrow brick slab on both sides like that on top of those uh, birchwood planks here after those uh, rails. Uh, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves skeleton skulls. We're going to place down a row of or basically two skeleton skulls on both sides, and in between them, we're going to place down a redstone repeater, like so. After that's done there, we're going to go ahead and also grab ourselves rails again. We're going to place down rails on these two black wool blocks, facing the same directions as these ones from before them. And we also want to grab ourselves levers, and we're going to place down a lever on these two granite blocks that are going to be flicked facing toward the rear, like so. And once you guys have that all finished, that is going to do it for layer four. With that, let's go ahead and uh, move on to our last final layers, which will be layers 
five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We'll just put the top on and pretty much finish this build off. So with that, let's move on to our last final layers. All right, guys. So going ahead and move on to our last final layers. We have layers five through nine. For these layers, we're gonna go and start off by going to this smooth sandstone block up here, uh, where the cobblestone walls are connected for the gun. We're gonna go ahead and place down a uh, wooden trap door on top of it, followed by a skeleton skull directly behind it. After we have uh, that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of sandstone slabs across, followed by a birchwood slab on both sides of that. We then want to go and continue on by placing down another birchwood or birchwood slab on. Uh, actually, sorry, my bad. We're going to place down a spruce wood slab here on the right side, and we're going to place down a birchwood slab over here to the left side, followed by a row of three of smooth sandstone in between it. We also want to go ahead and go to this uh, birchwood slab here on the right side. We're going to place down a uh, birchwood stair like that in its place like so. After that's finished there, we're going to place down a birchwood stair on both sides like this, followed by a sandstone stair on both sides like that going toward the inside, and a cobblestone wall here in the middle in between those sandstone stairs. After that's all complete there, we're going to place down a birchwood plank on both sides like that going back, followed by a row of three of smooth sandstone. Continuing on, we're going to place down another birchwood plank on both sides, followed by another row of three of smooth sandstone across. Uh, after we have that done, we're going to place down a, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and place down a spruce wood plank, uh, right here on this smooth sandstone block. We're actually going to place that right there like that. And we're just going to take, uh, from this point here, take cobblestone walls and place down a row of five across the back there like so. Um, after we have that done, that's kind of the top there done for that. And we can go and expand upon it by placing down a skeleton skull on top of this birchwood plank here. We're also going to place down a skeleton skull on top of this second cobblestone wall from the right side like that. And uh, we're also going to place down a uh, sandstone slab on top of this uh, sandstone, smooth sandstone block over here on the right side like so. Lastly, we're going to grab ourselves iron bars. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four iron bars going up from this cobblestone wall here on the back right corner. After we have all that done, that's going to pretty much do it for the basic design here for the uh yeg panther if you guys are interested in putting the camouflage on i'll be doing a little part coming up next on how to put the camouflage on it's pretty simple and uh should be pretty easy to go for so if you guys are interested in putting that on i will be covering that next but that's pretty much the standard design there for the yeg panther done and good to go anyways with that let's go ahead and move on to the camouflage so this camouflage here is a bit different from the typical cam camouflage that we've uh, used before this one's just kind of like a spotted pattern it's nothing really uh, organized with stripes or anything like that so it's just a kind of random uh, pattern really um, so for this you can easily do a lot of stuff different change style different stairs and stuff like that so it's very easy to replicate across a bunch of different tanks uh, using different styles to kind of create some difference and variety to your builds uh, however uh, to go ahead and basically you know get started with this it's pretty simple um, now we definitely want to have more sandstone more of a tan color than we do green you do not want more green um, than tan on this, especially with this type of camouflage we're going for. So, uh, for this, we'll just simply start off with our road wheels. We'll maybe swap out this block here of, uh, smooth sandstone and make sure every block you break, you replace it with the proper stuff that was on it. So we'll just kind of swap out some blocks here and there and maybe even right one right here. Um, so just a little bit random, nothing too crazy for that. We also want to make sure that we get the space in between in behind, in behind the wheels. So we can, we can go ahead and swap out some blocks here for some green stained clay. Um, just kind of random, kind of spotted like that underneath. Uh, going ahead and moving to the top side. It's, you know, a bit different. We're going to place down a dark oak wood slab here, a dark oak wood stair there, uh, just to kind of fill in the spots. Um, on top here, we can maybe put in some um, green stained clay right on top here by the gun. And don't feel afraid either to swap out zombie heads or skeleton schools for zombie heads um, pretty much looks the same and gets you a nice little green look to it as well. Um, and then up here, just, you know, again, kind of continue with dark oak with, dark oak with slabs, uh, dark oak with stairs, and some green stained clay just to create some colors to it. Um, on the sides here, we can go ahead and place down some green stained clay behind these cobblestone walls like this, and we can swap out the cobblestone walls that were there for some mossy cobblestone walls like that. Um, so just a kind of cool little technique for that. Uh, we can place down some green stained clay back here. This back section here again. Don't feel, don't be afraid to go and replace some blocks. I mean, it's you know easy to just replace them and put them back there if you need them. Um, and you can just go ahead and just take this design and kind of work with it, put it around different spots, and everything like that, and see what you guys like. Also, one thing I almost forgot was the 
uh, coaxial, or the, uh, I should say, hole mounted machine gun, which is just going to be an end rod over here on this uh, block like that on the right side. So go ahead and add that on if you haven't already. Um, and then we could just go ahead and place down some slabs here. Maybe a darker wood stair there. Down here a little bit. Uh, we'll place down a stair there. And maybe even a stair right there. So again, you're not over going crazy with the amount of um, green stain clay you're putting in. You're just putting it in the right amount just to kind of give it a touch, a little speckled uh, pattern, a little touch of green here and there. And um, we'll go with that. So just uh, make sure don't go overboard with this camouflage. Uh, just something real basic. And uh, you should get something that kind of looks something like this. And of course, we can, you know, break this section here, put some stuff in. But overall, you want something that kind of looks like that, a very basic uh, camouflage, mostly keeping that tan color um, very prominent with it. Anyways, that right there, guys, is going to do it for the tutorial for the Yeg Panther uh, Tank Destroyer. Hope you guys do enjoy. Again, a special thanks to Patreon supporter Trenchfighter8 for making this video possible. Um, again, if you guys are interested in checking out my Patreon page, link is down in the description and um, everything like that. If you do use end up using this design, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This main thing from a sign of the build, tweet to my channel or this video if this does appear in any social media sites. As long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use it for whatever project you, projects you guys are working on and uh, everything like that. Other than that, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This week here at 2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.